Support for Jalen and Jacoby comes from Blue Apron. Blue Apron delivers farm-fresh, perfectly portioned ingredients and step-by-step recipes so you can make incredible meals at home. Rediscover how fun cooking can be while reducing food waste and supporting sustainable farms and fisheries. Visit blueapron.com slash Jalen to get your first three meals, a $30 value, free with free shipping. And now, Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN Radio. When I'm the truck, head to the dirt. Y'all pop the trunk, I pop the hood. Now act stupid, I pop the trunk. <laughs> Give me your po-po, po-po. He is Jalen Rose. What up, dog? I'm David Jacoby. And on the cold check in. And we are Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN Radio. What do we do? We get to find individuals who supported this idea. program consistently, constantly. About six years. What they want, mm-hmm. when they need it. Yep. Especially on my partner, my brother, David Jacoby's birthday. Thank you so much, What's up, Mr. Family? Rose. Happy birthday. I appreciate it. And I appreciate everybody on the staff for helping me celebrate my birthday. Shout out. Oscar Robinson is helping Russell Westbrook celebrate his triple-double record. He was in Oklahoma City tonight love to it. honor love Russell it. Westbrook. I love it, too. It takes time and energy to fly somewhere, especially Oklahoma City. Love it. Here's the thing. Is he would have made his travel plans a long time ago <laughs> if he paid closer to attention to Jalen and Jacoby <laughs> on ESPN Radio. Because it was just October 31st of 2016, before the season started, when Jalen Rose, in this very room, said this. I was watching basketball thinking, there's been one player in the history of the NBA to average a triple-double for an entire season. His name is the big O. Oscar Robinson. Oscar Robinson. Did it in the 61-62 season. And I remember saying last year that there were a couple of people in the league based on the pace and based on who they play with. They have an opportunity to do this if they really wanted to because I believe they're that good. And I believed it was impossible. The odds-on choice clearly in my mind is Russell Westbrook. And you know what else? It's going to happen this season. He will be the first player since the Big O to average a triple-double for an entire NBA season. How did you know that was going to happen, Jim? So the amazing thing about sports is that what motivates you? And each team goes to training camp saying, realistically, what success would mean based on those expectations. Mm -hmm. And there's probably three to five teams that look left and look right saying, we have what it takes to win it all. And then there are another few teams that say, we make it to the conference finals, it would be a successful season. So as a storyline all year, other than the San Antonio Spurs, we were like, whoever played against the Cleveland Cavaliers, or the Golden State Warriors in the conference finals, they're going to throw a parade. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an amazing season for them. But other than LeBron and his excellence and dominance of the Eastern Conference, making it to the NBA Finals seemingly every year, leading the Cleveland Cavaliers to their first championship, having the opportunity to win back-to-back, I was like, what's really going to be the storyline for this season? And I was like, Six degrees of Kevin Durant. Because that was the entire story in the offseason. Once they lost to the Golden State Warriors after being up 3-1, he bolted OKC for the Golden State Warriors. And the talk wasn't, hey, KD, what is it going to be like to run with the Splash Brothers and Draymond Green? It was, oh, he left OKC oh, because you he can't win a championship. Russ and now Russ is mad. And you can't win a championship with Russ. That's why you bounced. And I was like, hmm. And somebody that's followed Russell Westbrook for a really long time, I know him personally, I knew that that was going to burn. And how can you get back and really dominate the league in your own way, knowing that you don't have a championship caliber team? Do something that's never been done. And I looked up front, I was like, he can lead the team in rebounds. That's the first thing that came to mind. Because at 6'3", he averages the most boards for a guy his for a guy his size. Yep. You're not surprised when he gets 10 assists. He's one of the top players in the game. He's an all NBA performer. Oh, and by the way, he's leading the league in scoring this season. And I was like, this thing is realistic. It's going down. And for him to actually achieve it, it's been a terrific feat. You know what I love about that clip? 
I love in the end when you say it's going to happen this season about something that has never happened before, only happened once in six, 1962. But I love also how you started this clip. I was watching basketball thinking. <laughs> I feel, I feel like we should start every show. I was watching basketball thinking. Sometimes when I'm watching basketball, I'm not thinking. Yeah, exactly. Maybe that's the part of the reason you enjoy it. You know what I mean? I've been I following this game my whole life. Thinking. And I also want to admit and confess, when you said those things, I made fun of you because it was such a bold claim. I thought it was impossible to actually average a triple-double, and I'm sitting here across you being like, I was wrong. What Russell Westbrook did this season, I did not see coming. I did not think was possible. The way the pace of the game has slowed down so much, just the resting and the, the wear and tear on the body, I did not think that this would possibly happen, and it has been a season unlike no other. And it's going to be sad to see him lose in the first round of the playoffs. It's all love, and I know you believe in me because 98% of the things I predict don't happen. Yeah, but we don't replay those ones. So... When you go as bold as I went on this one, I had conviction because I truly believed it would happen. And the amazing part of it is the totality of his year. More 50-point triple-doubles mm. than anybody in history. So say that again. 50-point triple-doubles. Like, we normally celebrate a guy for scoring 50. Let's not breeze through 50-point triple-doubles. How about... Do you know, here's my trivia question for everybody that loves the NBA. Name the guy who made the three in Denver that actually gave him his 820th assist. It, I, I, I hate to say this, but it might be one of the only things that he is known for in his career. Yeah. And so when you say um, Samaj Christian is mm -hmm. the answer, I'm like, who else he plays with? How's he getting 10 assists a game? <laughs> <laughs> right? In a three-point shooting league, Oladipo's a really uh, uh, young, yeah, good young prospect. Steve can finish around the basket. Yeah, they can, can finish yeah. around the hoop. Rovers is not a shooter. So that means the intensity and the effort it's going to take to get into the teeth of the defense consistently has been amazing. You surpassed the big O in a season with 42. You surpassed Wilt Chamberlain to become fourth overall in number of triple let me, doubles. Let me just, just put a button on it by this. Has he, in your mind won the MVP award with this regular season. Absolutely. Historic. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't overlook so many great efforts of obviously the best players in the game, LeBron James and Kawhi Leonard. The guy that should win, the guy that should be second in the race, James Harden, who led the league in assists after only averaging six or seven. He turned this game all the way up a notch and he's second in the league in scoring. An amazing year for the Rockets who got the third seed, but I have not seen a regular season other than somebody named Michael Jordan better than what I've seen from Russell Westbrook this year. You hear it first on Jalen and Jacoby. It's my birthday. I'm smiling because once this show is over, I'll properly celebrate. I'm also smiling because we are about to play my favorite new segment on the show. Soft move or boss move. A terrific creation by you, by the way, sir. Where everything we do here is a team effort. And uh, by team, I mean it's totally my idea. <laughs> the Texas football team has a chart that they've put on the wall detailing exactly what hue your urine should be. They have championship level what? urine that is properly hydrated, and then you get below a line where your urine gets di darker, and then you are being a bad teammate according to the chart. Regulating your football team's pee color. Soft move or boss move? Soft move. That's a soft move. Yep. Can I live? Just, you know what? This, I, I only want like four minutes a day where whatever happens, no one else knows about. And one of those is when I'm peeing. Oh, I got a revelation. Hit the brakes. <laughs> They're secretly testing their urine. I don't think they want to know what's going to be in there. Nope. Just think about what you just said. This is the same program that Ricky Williams went through. Just, this is the uh, same program that Ricky Williams went through. I'm not voluntarily peeing in the cup. When you do that, just so you know, the person that it's gathers gotta that sample. It's got to be in a contract. The person that gathers that sample. I think this is a self-regulation They're testing chart. it. I think it's a self-regulation thing. Not, I don't think there's another human involved. If it's not self-regulated, the information is kept internally. But you know what, Jalen? Regardless of the details, still a soft move. Yeah. Correct. No, we don't need that on the wall. No Someone doubt. had to take the time to make the chart and then print it out, go to Kinko's and put it on the wall. No, now, soft move. Now, however, if your urine does look like dark lemonade, you need to drink more water. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's a great point. A Notre Dame student ran a half marathon on a track and drank a beer at the end of every mile, totaling 13 beers. What? Binge drinking while running 13 miles, soft move or boss move? Soft move. Soft move. 
It did. It, you know what? Binge drink after the marathon. That's what sensible people do. You don't need to mix the fun with the work. The work is the work. The fun is what happens after the work. Yeah. Do not mix the two. It's yeah. a soft move. Yeah. Marshawn Lynch, I know you saw this, was being videotaped by a stranger on their phone. Marshawn Lynch hovered around for a little bit. They had a little bit of words, and then Marshawn Lynch smacked the phone out of his hands. Smacking a phone out of a stranger's hands. Soft move or boss move? Boss move. Yeah. It's a boss move. Let me tell you what the soft move is here. Charges get filed. That's the soft move. Yeah. Yeah. That's the soft move. No, it's not the soft move. The soft move is videotaping someone without their permission. I knew you were going to go there. It's so awkward. It made me feel awkward just to watch. He, because Marshawn recognizes that he's being videotaped. The person doing the videotaping recognizes that Marshawn doesn't like that he's being videotaped, but still continues to videotape. Let me just it's put passive it, aggressive. Let me put it in a way that people may or may not understand that aren't public figures or for whatever reason don't have people to want to take pictures of them or videotape them without their knowledge. It's the equivalent of you sitting there right now and me acting like I'm on the phone and I'm just like this. Well, you do that for like half the segments of the show. You're not a zoo animal. If you want to go take a picture of Marshawn or videotape him, just ask him. And if he says no, then you videotape him. <laughs> <laughs> Odell Beckham. <laughs> Got a Michael Jackson tattoo on his leg. It's very, what? very, very realistic Michael Jackson tattoo. What? Now, do, don't forget, KD has a Rick James, a Wu-Tang, and a Tupac on his legs as well. DeAndre getting, Jordan has some, too. Getting a tattoo of a musical legend with a checkered past, a soft move or a boss move. You can take out the checkered past. Getting a tattoo of a human being that you never met, soft move. I'm trying to think. Buddha? Is that a human being? Jesus. Is that a human being? I don't know. Getting a tattoo of a human being that you never met. Soft move. Jesus clearly doesn't count in that. Okay. I'm getting a Jesus tattoo later tonight. I have one. What? I forgot. Tony Romo. Keep it moving. Hasn't a very good point. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. (laughs) The Timberwolves released their new logo, and it really looks a lot like the Arizona Coyotes logo. It really looks a lot like their old logo. There's not too much new about the logo. Nope. New logo that's not a new logo. Soft move or boss move? Dropping a logo on the last day of the season when your team isn't going to the playoffs. Soft move. Yeah. You only get so many chances to redo your logo. Look right down the street at Milwaukee. You see what they did with their logo? That logo is dope. They made the deer and added the fear. That is the same wolf howling at the moon that you've had forever. I want a wolf pack. Timber wolves. That's intimidating. Wolves run together. Chloe Kardashian Ah. says, if Tristan Thompson proposed, she would say yes. Telling the public you would say yes if you were proposed to. Soft move or boss move? I support love. Boss move. I cannot believe you just said this. You are, not only are you su- supporting love, you're also supporting. I a try Kardashian. to be fair. You're supporting someone. I know. I, know I was going to surprise you. She, she just finalized the divorce this. papers I like this, this morning, I deserve, I deserve and here this. she is on wax talking about marrying someone else. That is also you have been. You've been a public figure for decades. You know how to dodge questions and give non-answers. That is a question that you dodge and give a non-answer to. Jacoby, over the last two seasons, I've seen her directly, indirectly dating or out with four or five individuals. Um, let me see who comes to mind. James Harden? Run. Lamar Odom? Run. Odell Beckham? Odell Run. Beckham? Right before camp. Tristan? Run. So I'm not surprised that she's in a good space with Tristan. They've been dating this year, and I support happiness. Tony Romo has officially filed. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. You know where keep it moving. <laughs> Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. It's a creative twist on a Belgian-style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. So, it is 4-12-2017. Some really notable individuals were born on this date. Mm. David Letterman. 
Yeah. Ed O'Neill. You might know him as Al Bundy. Al Bundy. Al Gar- Andy Garcia. Solid. Vince Gill. Tom Clancy. Tom Clancy. See, now we're getting to the, to the point of the list where I'm looking at your spot, Tom. And if Jalen Jacoby keep blowing up, I'm coming for your spot, Tom Clancy. You might have you might have made billions of dollars writing the same novel over and over and over again, but guess what? Guess what? I'm coming for your spot, Tom. What about David Cassidy? I don't know who that is. Oh, so you already got his he's spot from, in he's your He's from head. the 70s, right? Yes, indeed. Singer from the 70s? Yes, indeed. Okay. Okay, so in paying homage to you on your birthday, I want to do a couple of things. One, somebody sent you a cake for your birthday. Someone really, really special to you. Oh, and everybody that's been following this program for five years would appreciate it. It says, happy birthday, Jacoby. Love somebody and friends. Lance! Lance <laughs> sent me a cake! Oh, thank you, Lance. I didn't even know he knew it was my birthday. He's so busy. He's getting ready for the playoffs. Oh, that's really nice of you, Lance. Lance. <laughs> Lance, that's really, I really appreciate it. You know, I, I spent so much time thinking about you. It's nice to know that you spent a little time thinking about it. And he me. knew that you loved ice cream cake. It's Ice cream is the best kind of cake and yeah. the best sandwich. And best do, kind of cake and sandwich. And do you yeah, think yeah. Lance knows who Tom Clancy is? No. <laughs> Lance, it's only right. Lance doesn't know who David Letterman is. So while it's your no. birthday, I want to light it. Because okay. it's only right. Okay, we play code. tradition We're gonna get in trouble. and homage. You please blow them out, make a wish, and all, all of right. that good stuff. It's your day, sir. Exciting. I get it because Lance is blowing. The, oh, Lance, yeah. you guys are smart. I mean, Lance, Lance is smart. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lance. I appreciate it. So, that was very nice of you. Do you know how I know this isn't from Lance? Lance doesn't have any friends. <laughs> no. no one likes Lance in the league. That's how I know. That's why I know that it's not really from him. So, in continuing this theme of enjoying your birthday, we're going to spend one segment because you're really humble. You didn't want us to talk about it at all, but it was only right after five years I got a chance to do what I've always wanted to do. That's a version of Get to Know My Brother, David Jacob. Okay. So, how old are you today? 39 years old. One away from 40. What's the best birthday you've ever had? In New York City, what I would do on my birthday every single year is rent a basketball court. Invite all of my best friends to come play basketball. They would come play basketball. It was a really good run, and I took all the shots. <laughs> I had no assists. I took every single shot. Never passed. And also, when I lost, I stayed in the game. And I <laughs> my, played I'm next. running with you. I played next. Hold me a spot. No one told me anything. I just felt like the bully of the <laughs> playground. And it was so much fun. And then afterwards, I would drink a bunch of adult beverages. Favorite sports movie and why? Favorite sports movie. Um, Bull Durham. Do you know what Bull Durham is about? You know I didn't see Bull Durham. Yeah, I know you didn't no. see Bull Durham. That's why it's your favorite movie. It's my favorite. It's and my it's favorite your birthday? sports movie. It's my yeah. favorite sports movie. No doubt about it. Favorite fashion trend that you made sure you did not follow? Favorite fashion trend I made sure I did not follow? That has to be skinny jeans. I just knew. I just knew. Like, you knew I saw Lil Wayne start doing it early, and I was like, that doesn't look right. I was like, that's not now. Like, we're going to come away from that in time. So I'm going to skip this whole thing. Why do you love, adore, appreciate reality, reality TV so much? I'll explain. I think a lot. You know what I mean? I work hard. I really do. I work hard, and I'm on all the time, whether it's the kids or whether it's this stupid show or whether it's other ESPN responsibilities or whether it's the kids again and again and again. I just, like, try really hard. And when everyone's asleep and all the dishes are done and the house is clean and you finally get to breathe and it's, like, 8.45 and you know you're going to be asleep in an hour, you know what I don't want to do? I don't want to watch intricate, complicated, scripted television. You don't want to think when you watch TV. I don't want to think at all. I want to take my (laughs) brain out of my head Put it somewhere else and just not use and just sit back and zone and watch Vanderpump Rules for the second time for an hour and then go to bed. You still play pickup basketball, including today. Mm -hmm. Are you still thinking about going pro? If not, when did your hoop dreams end? Oh, wow. Um, I did not receive any interest 
from any college at any what? level after high school. What? Like, I didn't even get, like, a local community college and be like, hey, you average 11 points a game. You're pretty tall. Like, maybe, you know, maybe you can come run with, like, the, the Chicopee, you know, the Chickadees. Nope, didn't happen. Nothing. Not, not, even, not, not even, like, a Division Four low-level team took the time to send me a form letter be like, hey, why don't you come check out the program? That's when I realized it wasn't going to happen. You stress the fact that you're a Die Easy fan. Mm-hmm. Which team broke your heart? Boston Red Sox. Bill Buckner was my favorite player in the whole entire world. In 1986, I'm eight years old in October, and I had Bill Buckner printouts from newspapers on my wall. I had like a little Bill Buckner shrine on my wall for the Red Sox. Did you? It wasn't just that that was my team. This was my guy. Mm. And when it went through his legs, wow! it was one of those moments where it was just like, I cannot believe my guy did this. A lot of people forget, that wasn't game seven, that was game six. We should have won game seven. You ride your bike to work. What's the nastiest or most illegal thing you've seen while riding? Hmm. It's, you know what it is? I'm just going to say it on wax. Cops are always on their phone. Cops <laughs> stay on their phone. More than anyone else, police officers are, officers are driving and texting and driving and looking at their phones more than anyone else I have seen. What about people picking their nose? Ah, that's usually me. You know? <laughs> that's usually me. That's usually me picking my nose driving by. So you ran the marathon. That was yep. intense. Yep. Since then, you talked about looking for another challenge. So, your family here at the show, Mm -hmm. we wanted to make sure we presented that to you. And in doing so, we purchased you a skydiving package. What are your thoughts? It's a combination of terror and excitement. (laughs) Because, like, let me breathe a little bit after this marathon. Let me breathe a little bit after this marathon. <laughs> Give me a couple months. <laughs> but you know what? I will put it on wax right now. I will jump out of an airplane for this program. And we will air it. That will happen before the year 2037. That's fair. Because yeah. you know I'm not doing it at all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll, you know you, I'm not rushing you. First of all, you're not even going to go just to be there on the ground when I that. land. Yeah, you won't even be around. It's like the vice president and the president be at the same place. Something could go wrong. Jalen Jacoby has to I watched you run the marathon. I'm not watching you jump out of no plane. Since it's your birthday, you get 30 seconds to complain about anything you want. What's bothering you the most? Can it be big? Can it be little? No, just cook. Dudes carrying backpacks with wheels on them like they're rolling luggage. Like an actual (laughs) backpack with wheels like it's rolling luggage. Like, come on. I understand. Look, I understand a carry-on. That's fine. But when it's a backpack... A backpack with just like a pair of shoes in it. Carry it, man. Is that the same dude that will also have one of those circular pillows around their neck walking through the airport? I kind of like those circular pillows. I never told you. What? So we don't have a radio show today, but we always will give the people what they want, as we promised. We will always do extra time for our podcast listeners, our loyal, longtime podcast listeners, our favorite fans of the show. First question we have is from Tony. Tony doesn't understand you that well. I can tell based on this question alone. Jalen, while in the NBA, would you have rather won the scoring title or defensive player of the year? Oh, scoring title. You didn't even try to play defense. Scoring defense, title. it wasn't a source of pride. Where you like you did have you when you wanted to play defense, you could. You played some good defense on Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Was before. my role? Yeah, you you did, but that wasn't where your head was. Well, Larry at. was like, hey, he's scoring you twice, I'm taking you out. I'm like, I'm playing D. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, other than yeah. that, it was like if I score twice, I'm staying in. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much for the question, Tony. This is from Goran. Goran Zubik. Jalen, what coach in the NBA would you want to play for right now if you were playing? I know the answer right there. You don't even know. Carlisle. Yep. Spolstra. Pop. Those are my top three choices. Stan Van Gundy. Because you'd be wearing the Pistons. And Stan Van Gundy. (laughs) No doubt. Stan Van. Let's go to Woman Crush Wednesday. Our first voice, we're going to do all female voicemails today. Let's listen to Kayla. Hi, I'm Kayla from Tennessee. Uh, My boyfriend, RJ, listens to this every day. Um, This is also my first time calling. He had to call a few times to get on the air, so I'm trying to one-up him. 
But I also have a question for you guys. I was wondering how you guys think Tristan Thompson ranks in the top bigs in the game because he's my favorite player. Um, that's all. Thanks. Huh. Thank well, you for the call. Appreciate that, Kayla. I mean, obviously, we're not prepared to answer this, but I'll, uh, there's probably I would say there's a handful of people that I would rather have playing the center position than Tristan Thompson. There's more than that. Yeah, probably. I mean, if you want to start naming, you go DeAndre, go Bear, and, and White Jokic, side. yeah, and White Side. Like where's, you, you where's get the there, NBA? where's the you, NBA? You get roster? there. We don't have that. You get there pretty quick. I mean, I would say that he is he's the top Mark third. Gasol. Oh, there's a lot. Yeah, he might not even be. Did top you say 10. DeAndre Jordan? He might not even be top ten. Uh, Dylon. Did you say Dylon, Joel Embiid? Dylon. Dylon. Well, thank you so much for the call, Terrific Kayla. Terrific hustle player. Get you effort points. Rebounds, block shots, and contributes to a championship thing, contender. Is he might not be the right center if you're trying to build a team around him, but he's the right center for that team. You know, it's some, it's sometimes it's just about fit. Not everyone is going to be an all-star MVP candidate on your team. Jokic, one through five. Nurkic. Nurkic is real happy. Let's listen to our second female voicemail. Hi, Jalen and Jacoby. My name's Danielle, and I wanted to know, well, first of all, I have my mandatory senior ditch day today, and if you get... I think you get detention if you don't go or something. Anyways, we're going to Dawsbury Farms, and I wanted to know, what is your opinion on amusement parks? Thank you. I'm a huge fan of the show. I think we're going to be different on this one. We are. You want me to cook? So I'll be quick. I love the Disney theme parks. Of course. We're a Disney-owned company. Yeah. Been there multiple times. Support all Disney products. Amazing time. Love Disney. The best amusement park in the country is in Sandusky, Ohio, Cedar Point. Okay. I've been there multiple times. All right, so you are like a roller coaster ride guy. Until I got older. Oh. And I got a little bit taller. Oh. And I had more to lose. I started watching the news more. (laughs) I paid attention to horror stories. I saw a lady hanging upside down from the amusement park. And I started having adult beverages. (laughs) And at some point, it's like, you know what? I'm too old to be scared. (laughs) I'm so high off the ground. Yeah. Chink, 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 chink. I took my kid. I took my kid to Disneyland. Shout out to Disney. It's free. And uh, we went on like the baby roller coaster, and I was a little shook. I was a little shook on the baby roller coaster. The kid is four years old having more fun than I was. But I am a ride guy. I'm a thrill seeker. I'm going to jump out of an airplane for this program. What? Nah, I'm going to do it, Reg. Next, we have, this is from RC Cola. I don't think it's the corporate account, but, you know. Any cola that's not Pepsi is winning right now. RC Cola yeah, yeah. wants to know, would you punish your twins if you found out they were switching classes at school? No. No. First of all, they look so different that yeah. uh, the, that's know, on the teachers. Yeah, I'd be punishing the teachers. Right. Then second of all, like if if you're identical twins, they're switching everything. Not everything. RC Cola has another question. Do you know Charlie Murphy had a character in power? The upcoming episodes? Mm-hmm. He did. Yep. Rest in peace, Charlie Murphy. I'm such a fan. Loved him so much. Jesus Hate to hear of his passing at 57 Jesus years young of leukemia. So many Jesus notable projects. Harlem Nights, Jungle Fever, CB4, and the newer generation, of course. And he, he recognizes wrote, him he wrote from the Chappelle show. He a bunch of stuff that you love that he didn't just appear in. Like, he's been a behind the definitely. camera and in front of the camera influencing comedy in Hollywood for decades. Yep. Celebrate Charlie Murphy. He's a habitual line stepper. Let's listen to another voicemail. Hey, Jalen. Hey, Jacoby. It's your wife, Joey. Just calling to ask, what do you really want most for your birthday? I want to make sure we have it here for you when you get home after the show because oh. you're the best husband and dad in the entire world, and we all love you. Bye. Oh. Joey left a voicemail. That's really special. Yep. Thanks so much. Here's what I want. It's not so much what I do want. It's what I don't want. I don't want a parent tonight. <laughs> I don't want to change any diapers. I don't want to feed any kids. I don't want to clean up after them. I don't want, just, I don't want any of that tonight. That is my only request, Chua. My only request is that I don't parent tonight. We're doing something today called 50s Dad. We call that around the house. It's when you don't really contribute to the parenting. <laughs> See, that's basically it. 50's dad. You just don't contribute. So I'll be 50's dad today. That's what I want from you. And the lovely dinner that we're going to have together. Thanks so much for the call, Joa. Listen to another voicemail. Hi, this is Michelle from the Valley. First time, long time. Um, and I just, this question is really for Jacoby. 
Um, with this MVP race being as close as it is, do you think that everyone who doesn't vote for Kawhi Leonard's MVP should basically be fired from their jobs? Thanks a lot. I'll hang up and wait for your answer. First of all, that's Michelle Beadle. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> because at first I didn't. Then I was like, wait a second. I was like, this person really loves the Spurs. <laughs> you didn't get it from Michelle yeah. from the Valley. No, no, I didn't get it from Michelle from the Valley. But I will say this is um, I do not want that to be the case because I know that Jalen Rose is, gonna, is going to vote for Russell Westbrook. And then all of a sudden it's just going to be me and Michelle doing the show every day. Maybe that's why she asked the question. Yeah, exactly. Maybe She's trying to get me out of here. Question. It would probably be a better show. <laughs> Let's listen to one more voicemail. I want to thank everybody for calling in on Woman Crush Wednesday, especially my wife and the staff for making this day so special. Let's listen to one more voicemail. Hey, Jalen, it's Kobe. It's uh, Kaylee from Ohio. But uh, Jacoby's right. You should have set expectations a little low because on face-off, John Travolta is the good guy. And, um, oh, man, I forgot his name. I done messed up. Nicholas Cage is the bad guy. You just got him mixed up. You almost had it. But uh, keep giving the people what they want. Bye. That's one of my favorite calls we've ever gotten. I love that call so much because they see what it's like to be on live yeah, television. Yeah, because at the time, at the time when I, when you were explaining it, I was like, I don't really remember it that way, Jalen. But you were so confident that I just let you slide. You know what I mean? I was like, good, he's got it. Yeah, he probably knows because they did kind of each play each character, so it's easy to get confused. But then while she is correcting you, Haley from Ohio, she got it messed up. <laughs> it's hard to do live television. It is. Well, Thank you for the call. Appreciate the support. It's great doing live television with you all, both in front and behind the scenes. Thank you so much, Jalen Rose. Yes, sir. Thank you all for calling. Happy I birthday. really appreciate all the support on my birthday. And it makes me a little awkward, too. And remember, we are giving away tickets to our live event. What date is that event on? 420. We know our audience. 420. We give the people what April they want. April 20th in Los Angeles. We are giving away free tickets to that event. For the best tweets and voicemails. We're going to we'll get a lot sure, of laughs that day. We're i got to make sure bring the bet. that you are in the Los Angeles area because we are, do not have the budget to fly you into L.A. and put you up. But we will happily host you at this wonderful event, the Village Recorder, on 420, April 20th. I do not think they knew the significance of this date when they booked this venue for this show. No. Nope.